I'm Atto Bolden, the host of Inside Athletics, brought to you by the IAAF. In this episode, the young man who I believe had the best performance of the entire 2016 Rio Olympic Games, regardless of sport. He hails from South Africa, Wade Van Niekerk, in the men's 400. Wade, welcome to Inside Athletics. A real pleasure to have you on. I thought that your race was the performance of the games, not the track and field performance of the games, the performance of the games. I wonder when you realize that you've drawn lane eight, if you go into the race maybe a little bit more anxious and more concerned because of the talent behind you, or if you went into it thinking, you know what, it's the same 400 meters and I gotta do my job. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, I mean, you at Olympics at one of the biggest stages that you've ever competed at. So at that moment, it's, it's really just about going out there and doing the job. Um, we're all out there doing a 400 meters. Um, I still see it a bit as a, as a blessing in disguise yeah. that I was in lane eight. Um, I might have not do, executed the race the same way if I, was, if I was chasing or if I was on the inside of, of, of um, other guys, but I mean, it all worked out for myself, so now we can just look back and appreciate the moment. <laughs> you seemed more shocked than anybody else in the stadium when you saw the time, and I think it's just, you know, obviously the emotion of breaking a world record in the Olympic Games. But one guy who did not seem that surprised was Usain, Usain Bolt. And that's because when you trained with him, he said, I, I think this guy has the ability to run some times that we've not seen before. Tell me about training in Kingston and what you got out of that experience? Yeah, um, I think my, my expectations before the time, we were, we were all expecting some Mecca or kingdom <laughs> to enter when you, when you get to Jamaica, but yeah. you really get to just realize that these are, are really just guys like each and every one of us. Um, working hard. We're all just going out there working hard, trying to survive in, in track and field, trying to um, better ourselves as athletes, and, and you start realizing that we're all just human beings doing what we can do best and immediately I started interacting with, with, with all the guys in, in Coach Mill's group and my coach started feeling comfortable and we all just started mingling and, and you start realizing that there's no difference between you and I, we're both, we both just um, athletes and, and I think it, it really opened a massive door for myself mentally mm. because um, you where, where I come from, South Africa, you, you, you always think that United States or <laughs> Jamaica right. or Europe is where you need to make it, is where you can start breaking barriers. And, and, and that's kind of become a habit in South Africa where once you finish with school, you, you go over to, to um, the USA. And I always had something deep inside of me just telling me, you can do it right here in South Africa and inspire more and more South Africans to do it. And when I got there, I think we slowly or surely started rubbing off. And obviously, you gain so much confidence right. training amongst these guys. You're actually expecting them to be miles away from you before you know it. You actually might be ahead of someone wow. or you might be alongside um, the guys. And all of a sudden, your mindset changes and you think, but why not believe in, 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 in even greater things for yourself? Now, I'm speaking of belief. I'm of the belief that you are the person that's going to get closest um, to nineteen nineteen. I don't think 958 is under threat by you, but I do think that with your age and what I've seen with your ability to hold your top end speed, that 1919, that world record in the 200 meters, is certainly in the conversation. Do you believe that? <laughs> um, funny enough, the 200 meters is actually my favorite event. That's, <laughs> uh, that's actually... Well, that warms my heart as a, <laughs> as a world champion in that event. It yeah, is. It, it, it really, it's actually why I'm doing track and field is because I want to achieve so much in the 200. But okay, due to circumstances and injuries <laughs> and, and myself just doing what well in 400 meters year after year, it didn't really give me that opportunity or, or that door for yeah. me to, to enter the 200 meter scene. But now that I've, I've achieved what I have in the 400, I think it will give me more time to focus on the, the 200 and even the 100. Because wow. um, I really enjoy doing both 100 and 200. Um, we spoke about it earlier as well. And I spoke to Coach Shoma Sams at the beginning of the year before I broke the sub 10, I told the coach, I've actually, 
I know I've, I've, I've reached two milestones in my career, but I've actually only achieved one of the two. And she's like, what do you mean I've only achieved one of the two? I told her, um, my dreams was always to break sub 10 and sub 20. <laughs> I've never had well, a sub 40. Well, you've done that. I've never had a sub 44 dream. And, right. and she's like, okay. And, and that's when, when, when I started chasing a bit of hundreds and two hundreds at the beginning of last year. And luckily that door opened for myself. And, but it gave me so much more motivation to, to want to do a bit more ones and twos, but at the same time not neglect the 400. Well, you're in a very exclusive club. Speaking of clubs, <laughs> sub 10, sub 20, uh, and sub 44. Um, you're also, though, very close to sub 43 now, and it's actually one of the things that I said um, immediately after your race uh, on the broadcast of it. I said, my God, I have to prepare myself <laughs> for the fact that I'm going to see somebody run sub 43. You're the only person that knows what it's like to run 4303. Now that you've run it, is there any doubt in your mind that you can go faster? Well, um, I'm always someone that loves living in the moment. So I don't, I'm not someone that necessarily likes counting my chickens before it hatches. Mm. But at the age of 24, um, achieving a, a record that's been there for since ever, like forever. <laughs> and, and I mean, at the age of 24, you still feel like you've got so much more to prove. I feel like it's really just the beginning of so much more I can do as an athlete. So why not believe in, in, in getting that sub 43? But at the same time, it's going to take even more harder work and discipline. But I, I believe I can, I can back myself on, on attempting it. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about... Uh two of the most important women in your life. Let's start first with your mother. Talk about your mother's role in your career. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, thinking of it, you say your mother is your mother. She'll always have that extra special kind of love that not even me as a son can understand. Yes. But um, one, one should always appreciate it and cherish it. So I would always go out of my way to, to make my mother proud, to, to, to make her happy, to learn from what she has to, to, to show me as an athlete. Um, I always tell people that the people that actually are my role models and the people that actually inspires me is the people I interact with each and every day. Right. And and I feel that's the people that build the character I am today and 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 and, and help me be the weight that that that's out there on the track today. And and obviously I believe that she's played a massive role in that. Um, she's she's been there since day one. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, literally. She, <laughs> <laughs> and and and. She's played such a, a massive role in, in, in helping me choose the right opportunities and, and, and taking the right opportunities and, and, and not letting whatever comes my way slip. And, and obviously, I'll give her full credit for, for being the number one mom in the world. Mm -hmm. say. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I really appreciate her in my life. And I mean, I always wake up in the morning thinking it's another opportunity to go out there and make my mom proud. And on the subject of phenomenal women, your coach, talk about what, um, what the journey has been with her to get you to this point. Yeah, I think I can immediately actually quote my mom with my coach. Um, I think we, we, have to, we have to set the record straight, though, because a lot of people think my coach is my grandmother. I know, yes. <laughs> <She's not laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but um, on that, um, she really plays more than just a coach role. Um, she, she, bring, she sees us all as, as kids wanting to chase a dream. Right. It's not just about, I'm your coach, I blow the whistle and that's that. Mm -hmm. If you need a little bit extra off the track, she's willing to listen, she's willing to consider you. It's, it's not just about, um, here's the program and that's that. Um, if you, she, she tries and, and interact with each and every one of us, not just myself. Even if it's a newcomer, she'll put in that extra effort for you and, and she just has that warmth and that love with her that, that everyone needs, I think. It's, it's, it's not too much, but it's not too little either. It's, it's like just enough. Yeah. And she knows how to, to, to interact with each and every one of us. But I, I keep on saying it is that um, she's the inspiration herself. I mean, at this age yes. of 74, yes. um, reaching the, the height that she has at the age <laughs> of 74. I mean, uh, who are we to complain now? Uh, I mean, she's been waiting years and yes. years 
to get a Olympic gold medal, and and she's got it at the age of seventy-four. And the world record. And the world and, record. Yeah, too. and the and the world record, and and at the age of seventy-four. Um, who are we now to complain that um, things are not coming our way at the right time? I mean, she's been so patient, and and I think that story speaks for itself, and and we can learn from that. Now you're a man of of great faith, and I think great humility. Um, what has that that been like for somebody who is not, um flamboyant and, and an extrovert to be sort of thrust into that spotlight because you are the number one sports star now in, in your country. Yeah, it, it, it gets a bit tough for myself, um, the whole attention and so yeah. on. But um, I've immediately tried to teach myself to accept the responsibility that what comes with, with what I've achieved. Um, I like thinking of it as I am representing the people. If you, if you know what I mean, yeah. um, in, in the sense of um, I'm really just a boy going out there, training hard each and every day, the same as the person that has to wake up every morning going to work and, and, and working for their job to, to achieve the best work on that day. That's, that's just me. I'm just representing the simple guy going out there um, chasing a dream. But at the same time, unfortunately, at the same time, fortunately for myself, people get to see it on TV. Um, I'm sure there's people who do massive things within their workplace, but yeah. the world doesn't see it. Uh, so I just I see myself as as a representation, as as the people's person. Though so I am representing you, and and back home I, I had the, the the blessing to win a, a accolade called uh, the People's Choice, where people it was last week, for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where people <laughs> vote for 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 their best sports person, and to me it was something very special because I mean. This is what I stand for, and then yes. the people backed me as well. And I had a special moment afterwards where I just felt in my heart, I can give this trophy to the little kid that walked me out on the stage, and I gave him the trophy representing who I am to, to them. And I just want to inspire more and more, um, obviously, South Africans, because I am a South African to want to try and re reach their dreams and, and try and stamp their feet in the international stages, be it um, track and field, hopefully. Yeah. What can we expect from you? in the London 2017 World Championships? A 200, 400 double maybe? I would really love to, but I, I'm sure only times can tell. I'm going to definitely put in the hard work. I would love to double, and if the opportunity is there, I'll take it. Um, but at the same time, it's going to be quite a lot of hard work. But um, I'm ready for it, because it's going to be the first time I ever double at a, at a competition. As an ambassador for the sport, I travel the world, and people ask me, how is the sport going to survive once Usain hangs up his spikes next year or the year after? And I tell them, I think our sport will be fine. I think my, our sport will be fine because of people like yourself and what your potential is. All the best for you uh, in your career. And congratulations on a phenomenal 2016. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it.